Welcome back to our Firewatch training. Now in module two, we're gonna dive deeper into the specific duties of a Firewatch guard. We're gonna take a look at how to, number one, assess a property for potential fire hazards. Number two, inspect the premises for fire safety compliance. Number three, identify exit routes. And last but not least, number four, how to keep yourself safe. Now, are your notepad and pen ready? Okay, here we go. Number one, assess the property for potential fire hazards. Now, there are different reasons why property owners request fire watch guards. For example, A, the building may be under construction and the fire safety systems have not yet been installed. B, maybe the fire detection or suppression systems like sprinklers or alarms may not be functioning properly. Or C, there might be hot work like welding, grinding, or anything that produces sparks. D, there could also be flammable chemicals or materials without automatic fire protection. And finally, E, there could be a large concert or fireworks, which increases the risk of fires. Whatever the reason for the watch, you are there to make sure that the small ignitions don't turn into dangerous fires. So how do you do that? First, you need to evaluate fire risks on the property that you're watching. Each site will have its own customized fire prevention plan in writing, and you need to carefully review this document. The fire prevention plan will include important information about all the fire hazards at that location, how hazardous materials should be stored and handled, what fire prevention and fire suppression equipment are on site, and a contact list of people in charge of maintaining fire prevention equipment. The fire prevention plan could also include procedures for handling ignition sources such as hot work and open flames. Now here's a true story that illustrates how a fire watch guard appropriately handled a fire risk at a manufacturing plant. While patrolling the site, the guard noticed that sparks were emanating from welding right next to flammable materials. So he immediately saw the potential danger. So he stopped the welding work, asked for hazardous materials to be removed from the area, and his quick reaction prevented what could have been a disastrous fire. Now, like this guard, you must conduct a visual inspection of the entire property. Use the site or building map to plan your patrol routes. Make sure you inspect the whole site, especially areas that are more at risk. As you patrol the property, looking for anything that could cause a fire, are flammable materials stored properly? Are there any overloaded electrical outlets or damaged wires? Are fire exit routes clear? And once you've completed these tasks, identify potential ignition sources like open flames, hot surfaces, or electrical equipment that could spark. Make sure that ignition sources are managed properly. Two, regularly inspect the premises for fire safety compliance. As a fire watch guard, you must ensure that both human behavior and fire prevention equipment comply with local codes and standards. Let's first look at human behavior. Watch for the following behaviors as they could put everyone and the entire property at risk. Blocking fire exits. Make sure that no one is blocking a fire exit or dumping furniture, equipment, or storage items in the way of an exit route. This would prevent people from evacuating in case of a fire. Ignoring smoking policies. Did you know that an estimated 7,600 smoking-related fires in residential buildings occur in the U.S. every year? Smoking in non-smoking areas violates fire safety regulations. Don't allow it. Cooking carelessly. In restaurants and catering facilities, watch for cooking appliances that are unattended while in use. Make sure that people are not cooking with flammable materials near open flames. Kitchen fires happen frequently because of careless behavior. Overloading electrical outlets. Keep an eye out for people who are overloading electrical outlets or using damaged electrical cords and equipment. This could also lead to an electrical fire. Engaging in hot work. You know, as you know, anything that produces sparks can cause an accidental fire. Hot work like welding and soldering or cutting metal requires special safety measures like fire-resistant barriers 
or a fire watch on site. Storing flammable materials in the wrong places. Make sure that flammable liquids, gases, or materials have been properly contained. Make sure they're never too close to ignition sources. A fire that's caused by flammable materials will spread quickly. Tampering with fire safety equipment. You want to be on the lookout for anyone who might disable, misuse, or tamper with fire alarms, smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, or even sprinkler systems, and finally, failing to evacuate. If a fire alarm goes off, make sure that everyone evacuates. If occupants are not taking evacuation orders seriously or they're not following proper evacuation procedures, it violates compliance codes and it just puts everyone at risk. Now let's take a look at fire prevention equipment compliance. As a fire watch, you play a crucial role in making sure that fire protection equipment is in working order. Keep in mind that the fire extinguishers have a limited shelf life, so you want to be sure to check the expiration date. Next, verify that smoke detectors function properly. Did you know that smoke detector failures account for 20% of fire-related deaths? Something as simple as changing a battery can save lives. You must also verify that fire alarms, the sprinkler systems, other fire suppression equipment are fully functional. Never overlook anything when it comes to fire prevention. Better be safe than sorry. If fire prevention equipment is either not working properly or expired, you must immediately report the issue to ACS and to the property representative. Number three, identify exit routes and make sure that exits and walkways are clear at all times. So what if during a routine patrol, you notice that boxes of supplies were blocking the emergency exit door in a storage room? What should you do? Well, you should immediately contact the facility manager to have the boxes relocated. And this just ensures that the exit route is clear and accessible. You should then document the observation and follow up to confirm that the issue was resolved. Many fire tragedies can be prevented by making sure that exit routes are clear. So while making your rounds, identify exit routes, make sure that exits and walkways are clear at all times to facilitate a safe evacuation during an emergency. And in order to do this, you must A, study the site map so that you know where the exits and stairwells and the evacuation routes are located. B, patrol the premises regularly to see if anything is blocking exit routes and walkways. C, remind building occupants, employees, or event attendees to keep exit routes and walkways clear. At times, you may be asked to post signs that show exit locations and evacuation procedures. D, when available, Monitor surveillance cameras to see if anyone or anything is blocking an emergency exit or a walkway. Number four, stay safe. While on duty, your personal safety is critical. Always keep in mind that you are monitoring hazardous situations. Take every precaution to stay out of danger. So how do you keep yourself safe? Well, you should, A, Avoid taking unnecessary risks. Always prioritize your safety and avoid taking risks. Follow safety protocols. Use common sense. For example, don't enter a confined area if you see or smell smoke. Don't touch or move hazardous and flammable materials and don't ever attempt to put out a large fire. Instead, contact the fire department right away and alert the occupants. You should also be Maintain communication with ACS. If you have any questions about your personal safety while on duty, call dispatch or even your supervisor. Just make sure that all important ACS phone numbers are stored in your smartphone and are on speed dial. Finally, C, stay alert. We cannot say it enough. You must remain alert and aware of your surroundings at all times. Always scan for potential fire hazards, signs of smoke or fire, and anything that could affect your safety and the safety of others. It's a good idea to stay in shape. Good health, physical fitness, they just help you feel more confident on the job so that you 
can perform your fire watch duties effectively. This concludes module two. So what have you learned? Do you know the reasons why property owners request fire watch guards? Do you remember what human behaviors violate fire safety compliance? What have you learned about the exit routes? And how should you keep yourself safe in a hazardous situation? If you can't answer these questions now, you won't be able to answer them later when you take the quiz. So I highly suggest that you review module two and take good notes.